brothers and sisters, we are back. We are back. We got 40 minutes left. Let's see what else we got. Brothers and sisters, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Brothers and sisters, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Brothers and sisters, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Brothers and sisters, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Yes, I heard about the white family that enslaved their five black foster children. I heard about the Caucasian family that enslaved their five black foster children. I heard about the Caucasian family that enslaved their five black foster children. But you know what? That's our fault because we do not foster and adopt our own children. That's our fault, because we do not foster and adopt our own children. I have a question for your IG live. How do you feel about Billy Carson? This is the black parent teleconference. I don't follow my brother's work. If he's helping the black community, if he's building relevant institutions, if he's creating relevant systems to solve tangible problems, I support him. I don't follow the work. I respect him, but that's all I'm going to say to that. he can one of the told me he's only getting about an hour of instruction and we both agree he's intellectually capable but wait a minute if you mean he's only getting an hour of special ed if that's the case that's a good thing if he don't need special ed one hour of pullout should be sufficient because you say he's very intelligent and i'm sure he is so that means he should stay in the regular class at the charter school and get one hour of pullout that sounds good to me. You never heard of FDMG? What do you mean you never heard of FDMG? That's insane. She never heard of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Puerto Rico, I'm coming, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, I can't wait. What's the best restaurant in Puerto Rico? What's the best restaurant in Puerto Rico? What's the best? Dominican Republic, let's set it up. I'm going to hit up PRNDR. Lord have mercy. You must stay focused, brothers. Uh. Mm.
Peace and Pan-Africanism. My name is Devin from Memphis, Tennessee. 12 year old little sister, been on an IEP since the second grade, continues to struggle with reading and math. Where is the tutor for the summer? Brother Devin, where is her tutor for the summer? I don't want to hear about no struggling with reading and math until she had a tutor all summer. Three days a week, 90 minutes a shot. Three days a week, 90 minutes a shot. She's been labeled as autistic. She has continued to progress to the next grade. School is terrible. They only want to get rid of the kids. Big issue. I can't get our parents to take it seriously. I'm a truck driver, so I'll be going. Pay for your niece. Pay for your little sister to get a tutor, Devin. Find a high school student who can tutor your niece. Find a high school or college student who can tutor your niece while you're away. Three days a week, 90 minutes a shot. Get her a tutor. Right. Praying your strength, blessings, peace and blessings. Thank you, my queen. OK, any more questions about the children? Let's see. You are invited as a first guest of the Black Star Hotel in Ghana, built in 1957. We are rebuilding. Please schedule a visit. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Where my, where my guy, where, where, where my Ghanaian Africans at? I'll see y'all in November. I'll see y'all in November. Good morning. I would like some information on family court case corruption, improper evidence, police report. Lies regarding supervised visit. They want the father to pay to see his son. No evidence of violence. What shall my son do? He's not seen his son in four years. Queens, New York family court. Father has been paying child support for six years. You need you a, uh, you're going to need a uh, child support attorney. Family attorney, child support attorney. He's going to need a family attorney, child support attorney. I work at the largest HBCU, Southern University. Where my Southern, where I ain't been invited to Southern University yet. I am in Detroit. I want to support sisters around maternal health. It seems as though anything aimed towards black maternal health is low budget. We hold white physicians to a higher standard. We talk about maternal mortality, but then turn around and serve toxic food and give away toxic things for mothers and children. We have to do better. I agree. Peace and love, Sister Jasmine. How you doing this morning? Hi, Dr. Umar. I'm doing well. Where you based that beautiful? You still there, Jazz? I am. Where Can you, you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Where you based that? I'm in Fishkill, New York. Fishkill, New York. Is that where that's where that's by? That's right outside the boroughs or that's up by Rochester, Syracuse somewhere? Um, I'm more closer to Albany. I'm about an hour from Albany. You're about an hour from Albany. I got so you're in a, mm -hmm. a pretty white city, right? Yes, I am predominantly. Predominantly yes. white. Okay, mm -hmm. go, go right ahead with your question. All right, so um, I'm raising a 15 year old um, son, and um, he has been experiencing 
basically what's been going on is his dad has not hasn't been around in his life. Um, he hasn't seen his father since he was about seven years old. Um, his father served in the military. He was diagnosed with PTSD. Um, so he's dealing with a lot of um, psychiatric issues at this moment. So my question to you would be, um, since my son hasn't seen his father, he speaks to him periodically. He like just kind of just pops up out of nowhere for like a couple of weeks and then disappears for months and months, sometimes years on end, and then pops up again. Um, so my question would be, do I continue to allow my son's father to just continue popping up in his life? Um, just out of nowhere, I feel like my son gets so um, depressed when he disappears, and then he's depressed for months and months until he comes back around. Okay. So, the father yeah. lives in the same city with you guys? We have no idea where he is. We haven't seen him since my son was like six, seven. So we think he's in New York, but a couple of months ago he was in Texas. He's just all over the place. Okay. Um, and there's no way for you to establish contact with the father. We were married, now we're divorced. So he seems to harbor a lot of um, emotions from our divorce and from our separation. So he doesn't really want to have too much to do with me, which is okay. fine. But um, I just don't know what to do because I never want my son to feel like I'm taking him away from his father. But now we're starting to... Um, the last day of school that my son was, you know, smoking weed and he ended up selling an edible to a kid who ended up going to the hospital. And when I ask him, why are you doing this? He's just like, I just want to just, you know, um, numb myself so I don't have to think about not having my dad around. So okay. it's starting to affect him. Um, does he have a father figure? Uh, who spends time with your son? Uncle, brother from the community, coach. Does he have any male? My influence? stepdad, yes, my stepdad. And then um, he was playing basketball, but he's somewhat given up on it because he's saying he's not good. He's not really, you know, confident in how he plays. So um, he did have like his basketball coaches, but he's just given up on the sport altogether. So I do have my stepfather, but he's far away. He's all the way in Pleasantville, which is Westchester County. So I'm about 45 minutes away from him, an hour. Okay. When the father does pop up, how long does he pop up for? Like, is this a five minute, how you doing? Is he there for the day? How do these no. pop-ups look? The pop-ups look like him texting him, hey son, how are you? They speak for maybe like, and it doesn't matter where he is. He'll text my son, Monday morning, 11 a.m. on a school day while he's in school, and he'll just text him out of nowhere. Um, he'll stick around for maybe like, maybe three weeks. He won't make any plans to come see him, but he will absolutely text him and call him. And he'll stick around for three weeks, and then one day my son will text him because he says, oh, well, I haven't heard from my dad in a little while, and then the text messages don't go through. He tries to call and the call is just saying it's, um, you know, disconnected. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't stop the pop-ups. Okay. Some contact is better than none at his age because he's a teenager now. Mm -hmm. um, how does he deal with the pop-ups? Like, does he talk to his dad? Is he enthusiastic to see him? He's so enthusiastic to the point where he was in school, his dad texted him and his teacher told him to put the phone down and he wouldn't. He refused to. Okay, so he definitely looks for it. Yeah, I wouldn't stop it. You know what? Have him write a letter to his father asking okay. for more consistent and scheduled time. Okay. And let's see how a letter See if that'll touch him a little bit enough where he'll try to do a little better. 
I mean, the I fact he's popping up does show his son is on his mind. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. We just need yeah, him to be concerned. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, the pop-ups, they come sporadically. It could be in a year where we hear from him or it could be next week. Mm -hmm. So we never know. And I don't have an address for him. I don't know where he is. Even when I tried to like put him on child support, they couldn't find him. So mm -hmm. he's just... I don't, I don't know where he is to even send a letter. What about his family, his parents, brothers, sisters? His, his mom has passed. He doesn't know who his dad is. Um, his grandmother has passed. The only two people he does have in his life are his uncle, which I have no idea where he is. He is sickly. He has like kidney failure um, and diabetes and hypertension, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, his sister does not have contact with him. I'm, I ended up running into her last year, and she said she hadn't spoken to him in months. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. And I don't uh, mean to be offensive. Mm -hmm. Are you sure mm -hmm. that you have not in any way mm -hmm. sabotaged or disturbed your son's father's attempt to build a relationship with him? May, I may have when I noticed, I noticed the change when I filed for full custody. That's when I noticed the change. Why did you um, file for full? Why didn't you settle for split? He, he was abusive. Um, the thing, his, like I said, he has PTSD. So the way he communicates, the way he moves in society, he's just erratic. Um, he's been on and off of drugs. Um, I speak to some of his childhood friends from where we were born and raised. We were born and raised in Queensbridge Projects. Um, I still speak to some of his friends, and his friends don't really even speak to him from there neither. They say he pops up. He does the same thing with his friends, changes the number all of that good stuff. But I, I do accept responsibility for um, getting the full custody. But I truly felt like in that moment, I felt like I had no other choice. Um, I was scared that he would like take my son from the school and hide him. I, it was just so many things that were happening. Like he would be outside my window, you know, screaming and yelling. And this is my grandmother's apartment when I was living in Queensbridge. He would be outside the window screaming and yelling, come outside, Jasmine, come outside. I got to, like, just really, really erratic. And it just made me fearful. So I, that was when I noticed the change. Okay. Okay, I understand. I understand. Well, let me offer you this. If you're ever able to speak to his mm -hmm. dad, you know, if you would like to do a mediation session uh, with mm -hmm. me, I would be more than willing to do that. I would love that. You know, the three of us on the phone virtually, you know, in person mm -hmm. may be difficult, but definitely uh, virtually mm -hmm. or on the telephone, we can do that. Okay. Um, I'm so appreciative of you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. No problem. I'm so appreciative. No problem, Queen. Keep me posted. Okay, we will do. Okay, now. Right. Thank you. Okay. Now, I want to say this to the black women in the chat. I want to say this to the black women in the chat. Some of y'all said that, you know, why have the father, why have the son write a letter to the father? Because the son needs the father. This is not a time for ego. This is not a time for ego. See, the problem with some of you black women, not most, but some, many of you, but not most, a lot of you do not value fatherhood because you didn't have your father. I'm talking to black women right now. I'm talking to black women right now. I always get on the brothers for you. I'm going to get on you for the brothers right now. I'm talking to black women right now. I'm talking to black women right now. I always get on the brothers for you. Now I'm going to get on you for a minute, sisters. I'm going to get on you for a minute. A lot of black mothers did not have their fathers or did not have their fathers in a productive or successful way.
and because your life was hell with your father, because your father mistreated your mother, because your father abandoned you, somehow in your narcissistic trauma, in your traumatic narcissism, you decided that your masculine child would be better off without his dad. How dare you? You selfish ass woman. How dare you decide that your masculine child, you're a woman. You're not a man. You've never lived as a man. You don't know what it's like to be a black man. You don't know what it's like to be a black boy. But because of your family trauma, because of what your father did to you or because of what your father did to your mother, your selfish ass. Yes. Yes. Your selfish ass, black woman, some of you, you decided. Because of your own family trauma that ain't got nothing to do with that man, that man's son. Excuse me. That boy's father has nothing to do with what your father did to you. Your son's father ain't got nothing to do with what your father did to you. Your son's father ain't got nothing to do with what your daddy did to your mother. And you are punishing an innocent man because of what your father did. That is not fair. And a lot of you black women are denying your sons their father because of what your father did to you. And it's a damn shame. It's a big problem in the black community. I'm going to go a step further. Can I talk to the grandmamas for a minute? Can I talk to the baby grandmamas for a minute? Can I talk to the baby mom's mom? Let me talk to your mother for a minute, baby mama. Let me talk to your mother for a minute, ex-wife. Let me talk. What I find is the grandmother can be just as trifling as her daughter and the grandmother will help her daughter keep the son away from his father because of how your daddy treated her. So now you got intergenerational trauma. You got intergenerational dysfunctional feminism. You got the grandmother who is emotionally disturbed and the daughter who is emotionally disturbed. And now you got the grandmama and the daughter working together to keep the son away from his father. And it's all good. It's all good. It's all good until he starts smoking weed. It's all good until he joins a gang. It's all good until he stopped going to school. It's all good until he gets locked up. And then when he gets locked up, stop going to school, start calling you all kind of bees and hoes. Don't respect you no more because you kept him from his dad. Now you calling the daddy up. You need to come get your son. Where was all that energy when you kept my son from me in the first grade, in the second grade, in the third grade? Where was all that energy when you kept your son from him in the fourth grade, in the fifth grade, in the sixth grade? Where was all that energy in elementary school and middle school? You kept him from his dad. And when you can't control him no more, you call the dad to come get him. And then the daddy tells you, I can't. I can't discipline a child who I haven't had a chance to love. I can't discipline a child who I haven't had a chance to love. How are you going to expect a man to discipline a child he hasn't had a chance to love? Are you crazy? Discipline without love is child abuse. Put it on a t-shirt and make sure you quote my name. Discipline without love is child abuse. I said put it on a shirt and quote me. Discipline without love is child abuse. What do prisons give out? Discipline without love. What do white teachers give out? Discipline without love. What do police give out? Discipline without love. And what do emotionally disturbed black people give to our children? Discipline without love. I want you to understand, overstand, and understand the prince of Pan-Africanism right now. I want you to understand, overstand, and understand the prince of Pan-Africanism right now. 
I want you to understand, overstand, and understand the Prince of Pan-Africanism right now. Discipline without love is child abuse. And stop saying, choose somebody better. You can't read nobody's mind. You can only go off what they show you when you're dating them. You can't cancel somebody because they chose the wrong man. You can't cancel somebody because they chose the wrong woman. We don't get no ingredients that come with a person when we date in them. We don't get no cheat sheet. We don't get no cliff notes. You just got to do the best that you can. But the marriage rates are going down because America is a spiritually and psychologically unhealthy society that is ruled by money, materialism, and racism. I said America is a spiritually and psychologically unhealthy country that is ruled by money, materialism, and racism. I said America is a spiritually and psychologically unhealthy country that is ruled by money, materialism and racism that's why we build in the frederick douglas marcus garvey academy that's why we build in the frederick douglas marcus garvey academy heaven on earth you're going to have a place an oasis that you can come to and be around other conscious africans you're going to have an oasis where you can be around other conscious africans and I'm going to say this, 